Retrieve and Rank is a service for developers who want to be able to include relevant answers to questions in their apps, where those answers are found in some large collection of documents. As the name suggests, there are two main parts. Retrieve, a solar-based search component that can retrieve a list of possible matches from your documents given a query, and Rank, a machine learning component that learns how to rank those matches to sort them so that the best possible match is moved to the top of the list. As a machine learning based solution, this means that you need to train it. It will learn from the training you give it how it should handle your set of documents and the sorts of queries that your app will get. We've created a new tool for Retrieve and Rank to help you do that. It'll help prepare your documents for use with Retrieve and Rank and get them into the service. It'll guide you through the steps needed to train the service, telling you the next best thing for you to do at every stage. And it will help you evaluate the performance of the rankers you create in the service and understand the impact that your training is having. In this video, I'll give a walkthrough of how it will do that. To use the tool, you need to collect a few things first. Uh, a set of documents. This isn't a fixed read-only service that comes uh, with an existing corpus. You get to bring your own data. You provide your own documents that are relevant to your app and it will learn how to best return answers from them. These can be any mixture of Word documents, PDFs, or HTML files. Example questions. To train the system, it needs to see examples of the kinds of questions your app is going to get, so that it can learn from the training experiences you'll give it through the tool. Ideally, these should be something you collect from some existing source, so they can be truly representative, rather than something you have to manually write. And you'll need a couple of services from Bluemix. Retrieve and Rank itself, as that's what you'll be training, and Document Conversion, which is used to help extract the contents from your documents. So let's start with that last step, creating the Bluemix services you'll need. Through the Bluemix dashboard, I'll create a Document Conversion service, which for this video I'll call Demo.Conversion, and I'll create a Retrieve and Rank service, which I'll call Demo Retrieve and Rank. With those two created, I'm ready to start. Going to the new Retrieve and Rank tool, the first thing I need to do is log in with my IBM ID. I can then choose which Bluemix service instances I want to work with today, as I actually have access to multiple instances of these services for different projects that I'm working on and different teams that I'm in. Because this is a, a shiny new instance that I've just created and has nothing in it, the tool starts by prompting me to create my first cluster. So I'll call this Demo Cluster. Once my cluster is ready, I need to create a collection. The collection is the container where my documents, questions and training will all live in. Clicking into this collection, I'm now ready to start my training. The tool spots that I'm a new user to Retrieve and Rank, so I get a welcome dialog that offers me a tutorial. The tutorial does two things to start with. Firstly, it explains the three main sections of the tool, the three new tabs that have appeared in the top menu bar. Tasks, this is where the tool will drive the training. This is where I go when I want to uh, know what to do next, because in the background, the tool will continuously monitor the documents I provide, the example questions I collect, the training I've done so far, the evaluations of how the training's going, and it will use all of this and more to work out what's the next best thing for me to do. So the Tasks tab is where I'll be given a series of tasks to guide me step by step through what I need to do to train, retrieve, and rank. Content. This is where I can review and manage the documents that I want Retrieve and Rank to look for answers in at, and the example questions that I'm using for training. And performance. This is where I can manage the rankers that I've trained and evaluate the performance of the rankers to help me decide when it's ready to use in my app. Next, the tutorial introduces me to how I'll be training Retrieve and Rank. I'll be asked to rate possible answers to questions using a four-point scale. To start with, I'm shown the four-star scale and given an explanation of what each point on the scale means. One star for something that's just wrong, two stars for something that doesn't actually give the answer but it's at least in the right topic, it's, it's in the ballpark, uh, three stars for something which at least partially answers the question, and four stars for a perfect correct answer. Instead of relying on me just reading the description of the scale, to make sure I really get it, to help make it real, the tutorial walks me through a few pre-prepared example training questions and asks me to try rating answers for them. 
While I'm getting started, for these tutorial questions, if I don't give the expected ratings, it won't let me proceed. Instead, the tool explains why I should have picked a different rating and asks me to try again. The idea is that uh, by the end of these few examples, I should really get the distinction between each of the points on the scale. And this is particularly important if I'm going to be training a retrieving rank service together with colleagues, as it will help us to be more consistent in how we apply the scale, which makes a big difference in how the training goes. The tutorial also introduces me to the other buttons in the training screen. Uh, add another answer. For when you know the documents you've uploaded and you know there's a better answer out there, that's better than any of the four suggestions the tool has given you. And if you want, you can use this button to add your own suggestions to the list and then rate the, these as well. And I can't rate these. Uh, this is particularly useful when you're training Retrieving Rank with colleagues. If there's a particular question where you don't feel you understand enough about the question or any of the suggested answers to be able to give it a sensible rating, you can click on I can't rate these to skip it and leave one of your colleagues to pick it up instead. With the tutorial complete, I'm ready to start training the service with my own data. The tutorial told me that the task screen is where I should go when I want to know what's the next best thing for me to do. And sure enough, there's a task waiting for me to start putting my documents into the service. Clicking import takes me to the content tab where my documents live, and it gives me an easy way to start uploading documents from the browser. I get the option to split the documents up and store the sections in the Retrieve and Rank service separately. If I have very long documents and would rather the service return sections of those documents instead of the whole thing, ticking this box is one way to do this. It will use the headings in the document to decide where to split them up, and there's more information on this available by clicking through to the documentation if I want. But as we're in week one of Wimbledon at the moment, and I'm a big tennis fan, for this quick demo I've collected a few dozen documents about the Wimbledon tennis tournament, made up of a mixture of Word documents, PDFs and web pages. Now obviously for a real project I'd probably have a lot more documents, but this is enough for now to explain how everything works. So I've dragged these onto the browser window, and the tool is handling extracting the contents from the documents and loading them into the Retrieve and Rank service. Once this is done, if I click into any of these documents, I can see what has been put into Retrieve and Rank, and in particular, how the document was split up because I left that option checked. Going back to the task screen, the tool is next prompting me to provide example questions to start training with. Now these should be in a plain text file with one question per line. So sticking with my Wimbledon tennis demo, I've collected several hundred example questions that people ask about the tournament and its history. The tool starts to analyze these questions to create the most effective training plan for me, but I don't need to wait for this to finish. I can see the notification at the top that my next task is ready for me now. And going back to the task screen again, I can see that I have my first training task ready to start. Clicking into it, I see the training screen that I was introduced to in the tutorial, so I'm already a bit familiar with what I need to do here. At the top of the screen, I see the question, and this is one of the questions that was in that text file of questions I uploaded. Because the tool has chosen a batch of 50 of these to get me started. Now initially, for this first training task, it's done this using an analysis of the language used in the questions, choosing a subset of the hundreds of questions I uploaded that gives me the broadest possible coverage of all of them. To get me started as quickly as possible, the tool is getting me to go for breadth. Instead of leaving me to choose where I might focus on a bunch of similar questions or related questions, the tool is driving the training. And the best thing for me to start with is to get as wide as possible a cross-section of all the representative queries I collected, so it's helping me to do that. But using the tool, I don't really need to know or worry about how the questions uh, I'm given are picked. I can just trust that the tool will make the best possible use of my time and will choose me questions to train that have the best possible impact on training the system. As I saw in the tutorial, I'm asked to read the question, to review the four suggested answers, and to give each one a rating using this four-point scale. And when I've rated all of them, I submit my ratings and then I'm taken to the next question that the tool chosen. I don't go back to the task screen, I don't go back to some list of questions. I'm taken to the next thing to do because the focus is on efficiency, on helping me to collect as many ratings as quickly as possible. And the little radial graph in the top left updates to show me my progress on this particular training task to keep me going. If the answer's a bit too long to fit in the window, I can expand it to see all of it. 
uh, if the answer is too long for even that to work, or if I'd rather see the answer in the context of the document it came from, I can click on the document name uh, to open the document in a new tab that is automatically scrolled to the position of this answer. As I saw in the tutorial, if I know that there's another answer that hasn't been included in the suggestions the tool has given me, I'm free to add these to the list using the Add Another Answer button, and then I can rate these too. When I finish, I get a brief acknowledgement thanking me for my efforts, and then I'm sent back to the task screen to find out what to do next. The tool will continue to monitor how my training is going, and will tailor the training tasks it generates accordingly. As I get further into the training, it will start including an analysis of how training is going, what types of questions are returning good answers, what types of questions are returning worse answers, all of which will be used to tune the tasks to focus on improving the training outcome. But again, using the tool, I don't actually need to know too much about any of this. I just go back to the task screen to find out the best thing to do next and trust that the tool is monitoring and driving my training for me. The analysis that the tool does doesn't only affect the questions it chooses to put into training tasks, it also determines the type of training tasks that it creates as well. For example, if the answer suggestions the tool gives me are consistently not good, if I'm giving a large amount of very low star ratings to them, then this isn't going to be the fastest way to make progress, so the tool will switch training strategies. Instead, it will start creating search tasks, where I'll be shown a question that I've seen before, and given only low ratings to all the suggested answers and I'll be asked to search for a better answer. Going back over some of the questions that, uh, that the suggestions were particularly bad for does slow things down a bit, but it helps boost the training. And the training is used to generate suggestions in the tool, so this will hopefully get me back on track so I can get back to the faster suggestion rating approach. But again, the tool will drive this. If things have improved enough that I can go back to ratings, it'll create me more ratings tasks. If the suggestions it's generating are still not good enough, it'll cre uh, keep creating search tasks until things improve. And that's just two of the types of tasks. There are several others, each one designed to focus on particular training work if the tool determines that that's needed. For example, if I'm training the service with a number of colleagues, the tool will monitor the ratings that we're all giving and keep an eye on how consistent we are. Now, minor variations are expected. Of course, there will be times where I think something is a good answer and you think it's a perfect answer. And the tool will automatically manage that and aggregate this out for us for use in training. And there's going to be the odd time where we might disagree more than this. But if the tool sees a large number of ratings where we disagree completely, where I think something is a correct answer and you rate it as incorrect or vice versa, with this happening enough times to really impact the training, It'll create a task to get us to stop and review this, to get us back to training in a more consistent way. The consensus task will highlight examples of where we've given differing ratings, showing who gave each rating for each answer. On seeing my colleagues' ratings, I might want to reconsider my own rating. Maybe I just skimmed the passage too quickly before and missed that the right answer was in there, so I can edit my own rating if I want. Or if I can see the email address of my colleagues who've rated it differently, um, I can work with them to better understand why we disagree so much on how to rate answers. And the tool will give me these consensus tasks anytime it identifies there's a potential problem to make sure it can be addressed early before it impacts training. Some of the task types are much simpler. For example, if I delete a document, the tool will warn me if I'm deleting a document that's being used by some of the training questions. If I ignore the warning and delete the document anyway, then those questions which did have training ratings, uh, they'll have now lost those. To help fix it, those questions are grouped up and put into a task, which will help find replacement answers and get my training back on track. So you get the idea. The tool will analyze the documents we've uploaded, the example questions we've provided, the sorts of ratings we're giving, and use all of this analysis to tailor the training. And as a user, I know I just need to go to the task screen to find out what I should do next. When I've collected enough ratings that it's worth training my first ranker, the tool will prompt me by giving me a train ranker task. Clicking on the train button is all I need to do here. The tool will collect together all of the ratings from all of the users and use it to train a retrieve and rank ranker. Now, while that's running, a, a quick reminder of the three main sections of the tool. Now, I've already talked about the task screen. Uh, moving on to the content tab, 
This is where I can review the documents I've uploaded. Uh, I can add more documents if I want. Um, and I can review the training questions I've uploaded, even clicking through to view and edit the answer ratings for any particular question if I want. The performance tab is where I can monitor how my training is going and it shows me an evaluation of the ranker that I've created. When I clicked on the train ranker button, the tool uh, as well as training a ranker, it automatically created a randomly selected test set for me and held those questions out from the training so that they could be used to evaluate the ranker performance. Now I don't need to know about best practices for managing training sets and test sets or even really that this is being done, it's all done automatically. And the performance tab sums this up in a simple single graphic that compares the performance of the retrieve component by itself, uh, what the accuracy would have been like uh, without any training, and the performance of the responses returned by the ranker that I've just trained. So at a glance, I can see the impact that my training is having. As well as being shown to me, the test result that's created from evaluating this ranker is used by the tool as an input for the generation of training tasks. So I can go back to the task screen and carry on training, doing work that will be focusing on improving issues highlighted by the test results. And when I've done enough additional training that it's worth trying to train another ranker, the tool again will prompt me with another train ranker task. If I train another ranker, the performance tab will show me the accuracy of this new ranker, alongside any others that I've previously trained and how they compare against not using a ranker at all. So this gives me a simple, at-a-glance view of how my training is going over time. And clicking on any of the bars gives me more information about who trained the ranker and, and the amount of training work that had gone into it. So I can see the correlation between the amount of training work we're doing against the performance improvements we're getting. But if I want to manually compare rankers, I can do this too. Um, from the Content tab, I can use Try Out Watson to interactively submit a question uh, and see the responses that Retrieve and Rank gives. I can choose whether to see the unranked responses or the ranked responses from any of the rankers that I've trained. And I can see these side by side so I can see the comparison between them, giving me another idea of the impact that my training is having. Going back to the Performance tab, if I've decided, uh, decided that I no longer need an older ranker, uh, I can handle that from the tool by clicking on the Delete button. The performance will still be shown in the chart, so I still get the historical record showing me the improvements that I'm making over time. And when I've decided that my ranker is performing well enough to use in my app, everything I need to be able to use it is shown in the tool. The API documentation shows that I need the IDs for the cluster and the collection where the documents have been stored, and the ID of the ranker to use to sort the results. And each of these IDs can be easily copied from the tool UI. So to recap, the Retrieve and Rank tool it prepared my documents for use with Retrieve and Rank and it got them into the service. It guided me through the steps needed to train the service and it helped me to evaluate the performance of the rankers and, and to understand the impact that my training had.